Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you from the St. Louis Rapid section. Fabiano Caruana playing against Sergi Karyakin. So this is in round three. D4 from Fabiano. We see the Nimzo Injun going uh, chosen. So knight c3 allowing the Nimzo Injun. If white wanted to avoid it, he would play knight f3. Is the most popular way of avoiding Nimzo. But he plays knight c3. We have a Nimzo Injun. Bishop b4. Knight f3. b6. e3. Bishop b7. Bishop d3. Standard stuff so far. C takes d5. E takes. And now knight e5. White plays for a Pillsbury Binds. That's where you have a knight supported by two pawns. Named after Harry Nelson Pillsbury. Uh, so he used this in the great Hastings tournament with great effect. Uh, so this is a very, very dangerous setup. The thing is, though, it can weaken a bit d4 and also the light squares. Black plays knight c6, putting more pressure on d4. Knight e2 supporting d4. c4 with the intention of trying perhaps to create a stranglehold on the e4 square later. We see knight e7, knight g3 with the idea potentially of knight h5 to try and soften black's king side up. Knight c8 with the idea perhaps of knight d6, knight h5. Threatening now immediately knight takes, queen takes knight d7. That's addressed with bishop e7 to be able to take with the bishop. b3 undermining the pawn chain. c takes, a takes, knight d6. White plays now knight takes f6, bishop takes, bishop a3. And white has a very, very nice position. This is an annoying pin for black. But also, you know, queen d3 is a nuisance, potentially. Bishop c8. So if queen d3, bishop f5. But here now, queen f3. The bishop lost its attention on d5 there, and white is trying to exploit that. But also the queen has still possibilities for the attack on key squares. Bishop b7, which actually neglects h3. But also there's h5. So these two are very dangerous squares. Are they going to be used soon? Well, in fact, here, white plays bishop d3. And you might think, well, why, why not play queen h3? Let's have a quick look here. Queen h3, I think, is actually a good move anyway. Uh, you know, after h6, what is black actually doing? Black seems to be in a passive way anyway. Uh, so, but bishop d3 was played first. a5. Now rook a c1. Still, queen h3 lurks behind the scenes here to be played. When is it going to be played? a4. Isn't this slightly dangerous now on the queen side? It's here that white finally plays queen h3, threatening that mate in one. Crude but provoking weaknesses. g6. This is prone to be undermined with f5 in this position. But white has a much stronger move available here, actually. Can you see what white can do? It seems black's on the brink of winning material here, hitting the bishop, taking that pawn. White really doesn't want to play a move like that. That will lock in the bishop in the pawn chain. But white play, what would you play here if I give you five seconds to pause the video? Okay. Knight d7, it interrupts the queen from the knight. So bishop takes knight, it threatens as well as knight takes f8. Bishop e7. So white is now a full exchange up. Uh, you might think uh, there was a way actually of pinning here um, in this position. If you try the pin, it doesn't quite work because of rook takes c8. The queen can't be used because the knight takes f6. And if the rook takes, then we just play bishop takes d6. So yeah, it's it's winning material. So bishop e7, white's in the driving seat, the exchange up, and again ignores this pawn here. He just tries to crash through on the king side. f5, a takes, f takes g, a takes, h takes. So what's the point here? Why has white allowed this with the bishop exposed? And that pawn looks quite dangerous potentially. What can white play here which proves that his king side attack is worth sacrificing? The queen side potentially. White play, a very, very fast, powerful, energetic attacking move now. Can you guess it if I give you five seconds 
starting from now. Okay. Bishop takes g6. Threatening mate. And it's weakening this key diagonal. So f takes. White pounces on that key diagonal. King h7. And now white crashes through with. Can you see? Bishop takes d6, removing a key defender for the rook to infiltrate to the 7th rank now. Rook f7 check. The king cannot go backwards anywhere. If king h8, we have queen h3 check with, with queen h7 potentially to follow. If king g8 here in this position, we have... Can you see? If I give you five seconds... Okay, a powerful double check, which means the king has to take, and then we win the queen. So the king has to really go forward and now check with the idea now, the final move, can you see? Beautiful little move to finish off things neatly. Okay, g3, threatening mate. Very difficult stop unless black wants to sack his queen. So black resigned here. A wonderful, fabulous game by Fab Fabiano Caruana. Hope you enjoyed this one. Quite an instructive attack there with a Pillsbury bind being used, that Pillsbury bind formation. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.